Hey guys, welcome to another review. This time I'm reviewing Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. It was pretty good. I would definitely recommend seeing this movie, but that being said, there are problems. And I will go over those in a minute. This is going to be a two-part review. First part here, I'm going to be going over what I thought about it and all. Second part will be more of me going into a synopsis of the story and telling you guys what I liked about the movie through the synopsis. But here, it's just my general opinion. So let's start off with what they did right. The characters. This movie is good with characters. Not so much on, like, uh, the older characters. They didn't really get all that much. Han Solo got his part, and that's pretty much it. All the other old characters were just there, really. So, yeah. But the new characters, let's go over from what I think is, like, the least to the best. But first, BB-8. That's the new droid. I think it's cute. It It's definitely just a remake of R2-D2. I mean, in fact, this whole movie feels kind of like a remake. But I'll go over that in a second. And then all these characters seem to have little elements from the older characters, but I'm not sure what's up with all that. BB-8 is a good character, though. He's not annoying. He does cute stuff, and I like... There's this one part where he th gives a thumbs up. It's just like this little mechanical hand that has a lighter and it's supposed to be a thumbs up. That was cute. So he serves his purpose. But then uh, Ray is the second character. Uh, I don't like her so much just because... She's kind of boring, whereas everyone else has interesting lines and they do cool stuff. Everything she does is just meh. I mean, she's the new Jedi, so that's needed. She can fight well, but she seems a little too adept in the Force to the point where it makes it seem like this is a remake. Because no, no other character that's new to the Force has ever been this good at using the Force. You could say that she's just really good at it, but... That doesn't seem right to me. I mean, this is a new writer, it's a new director, it's a new story. It seems to me like they're sort of just uh, rebooting, which is something that J.J. Abrams is a fan of doing. He rebooted the Star Trek series, and then in that series he made a reboot of Wrath of Khan, which he didn't call a reboot. And all of his fans refused to admit that it's a reboot of Wrath of Khan. But it was a reboot of Wrath of Khan. And this movie is a reboot of A New Hope. I will go over that in a second. But anyway, uh, her character is likable. She's a good actress. Seems like they should have made her a bit more interesting. Like, seems like they wanted to give her something to do. So she's the Jedi. And she's also taking, like, Han's place. But... She doesn't really seem to have enough character development to the point where you're like, okay, yeah, she's like Han and Luke, and it's awesome. No, it's just like she's the character that does these things. It's not that she's the character that has their personalities. No. So she's, she's sort of, whereas every other new character has a lot of personality and you can describe them best, her, it's more like she's just, she's trying to be something, trying to find what she's supposed to be, but kind of failing. But then Finn, the new character, uh, he's an ex-stormtrooper. That is great. I, he is a great character. I really think that of all the characters in this, he is definitely the second best. And that's saying that he's better than the Han Solo that they show throughout all of it. And I think he's better than Han Solo because this Han Solo is... He seems like they're trying to force too much that he's Han Solo to the point where it's just more of a parody of Han Solo. It doesn't... I, the way it was written, it didn't come across like Han Solo that we know. It came like, across like Han Solo that we've not seen grow old and sort of become less. He's less of a smuggler, less of a sly guy. He's more of just an old guy who used to be that, but... I suppose that is what he would be, but again, I would have preferred to see the old Han Solo. Like, really, a Star Wars New Hope style, smug, nerf herder type guy, but what are you gonna do? Finn was great, he was, he delivered great lines, he was funny, but his character is a bit of a jerk, if you think about it. He's very, um, uh, 
what do you say, selfish. Everything that he does is sort of for himself, like, to escape the Death Star, he gets Poe Dameron to fly him, but he didn't save Poe Dameron. The idea was just to get off of there, because he can't take it anymore. He co couldn't take the killing, so he got out of there, and then he wanted to just, like, skip all the rebellion stuff and not help, but he got pulled into it. Then he wanted to skip it again, but he got pulled into it. Then he fell in love with the girl, from what I see. It's either love or a really great friendship, but then he gets pulled into uh, that because he wants to help her out to the point where all of what he does is just for what he wants. It's not that he's a good person so much, just more like he it's what he wants, yeah. But that's, that's not bad. We haven't seen a character really like that yet. Like Han Solo, at first, it was like he wanted it all for the money, but then he came back in his Millennium Falcon and took out the uh, TIE fighters that were attacking Luke. That was Han Solo's moment of, I'm not here just for my per own personal interests. Whereas Finn didn't really get a scene like that. I think Finn is more like a very selfish person, but that's a cool way of having a character in the Star Wars universe. We, have, we only see like good and bad. We don't see a guy who's just sort of both. Selfish makes him bad, but he does good things, and he doesn't want to do bad things, so it's good and bad mixed. And then Poe Dameron, the best character, I think, of the entire movie. Which, it, he's better than Han, he's better than Leia, he's better than all of them. Now, he's on par with, like, the Han from the older movies, but in this movie, he's better than all of these. He's a great pilot. He delivers great lines, the actor is really awesome, and it, I, at the end of the movie, I was just feeling like, I need to see more of this guy. Everyone else I've seen so much of, and it's like, yeah, yeah, you're guy, you guys are cool, but where's Poe? So it's like, you're watching it, and it's like, yeah, that's interesting, but I'm just sitting here like, uh, when are we seeing Poe Dameron again? Is he coming back, or is this going to be like, not so much? And him being a pilot, it seems like that's just more of a way for him to keep away from all the other characters. Also, it seems like they don't want these characters to mingle so much, which in the first Star Wars, you had all of the main characters, the new ones, like Han, Leia, and Luke. They were all together, and you got to see how they interact together. In this movie, you see Poe Dameron interact with Finn. You see Finn interact with Rey. You don't see... Ray and Poe in the same room together, like, at all. They don't seem to talk at all. So it seems like you have to hitch, develop your characters with everyone. It just seems like there's definitely some stuff missing, and they do have characters in this movie that sort of don't get what they deserve, or they don't seem to get enough development to the point where you're like, that's an awesome character. Like, Captain Phasma, she didn't really get anything. She was... She seemed like a really big thing. You watch interviews, the actress is always there. Uh, seemed like she was a really main character. But in this, she's just in a couple of minutes, really. And she's got a cool costume, but she never really does anything all that cool. Let's see, and then Kylo Ren, he's another bad guy. He wasn't all that menacing. That's a bit of a falling down, but he was... Okay, at first he was scary and interesting and I was like this guy's this guy is a good Darth Vader replacement but then he took off his helmet as soon as he took off his helmet it's like all the cool and stuff just wiped away the actor's not very cool looking he looks like a brat I know the guy's like 30 something years old but he just looks like one of those teenage brats that you want to be like shut up and that doesn't serve well for a bad guy they should have gotten a character an actor who looks like he's strong and uh, menacing, but also can play off uh, an innocent kid, which is something that you would imagine. And this guy, I'm not Adam Driver, I think his name is, yeah, he didn't do that so well because his face looks weak and sort of dorky, his jaw just goes, sinks into his uh, neck, it's just like, bleh. and that, <laughs> the actor was not a good choice. If you're going to take off his helmet, not a good choice. With the helmet on, he worked fine. And his voice worked well, but Frizzy hair, weird face, didn't work. If you, just off the top of my head, if Scott Eastwood is, was in that suit and he takes off his helmet and he's all cool looking, you would be like, wow, that's a bad guy that I actually want to be a good guy. And that would be something 
to like make you interested in this character and then even as he's acting like a bad guy you'd still be like kind of want him to be a good guy but then after he kills Han then you would be like nah this guy's just too far gone and they didn't really pull that off well because as soon as they show Kylo Ren you hate him and by the time it's ended you hate him just as much and you don't really like Darth Vader was cool this guy lo loses his cool with the uh taking off of the mask. The removal of the mask was the biggest problem here. And if he was a good looking guy under that mask, I think it would have been more effective when you see him scarred across the face with a lightsaber. It would be like, he's that's taken away from him. But he would be a vain guy because he's so good looking, but now that he's got a scar across it, it's going to like enrage him and fill him more with the dark side of the Force. So, I think that would have worked better. But anyway, I'm supposed to be talking about the good parts here, and the good parts are Kylo Ren, at first, was awesome. He, he's got the cool mask, the menacing uh, aura about him, and just the way he's real willing to kill someone right off and his temper tantrums, like he's staying in this room and he's pissed off, so he just goes like, and then you see outside of the room, uh, the place is getting destroyed, and you see two stormtroopers are walking down the way, and they just like turn around and didn't see anything. That was funny. They do a lot of subtle humor in this movie, and I think it works out great. The humor and the heart of this movie is great. The plot is where it has its falling down, and some of the characters are not as good as they could be. But I'll get into that in a second. The music in this movie is not as good as the previous ones, like the A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, or Return of the Jedi. It's not as good as those. It's about on par with the prequel music. John Williams is usually a great uh, music maker. I don't know, a composer. But, I don't know, there's something about this music that just didn't seem all that great. It's, at points it just sounds like the regular Star Wars music, but then at other points it's just rather dull and not uplifting. It's just like, gotta get through this, let's make the music, come on. Yeah. Anyway. Star Wars is well known for its music, so I have to mention the music because that's something that I really loved from Star Wars, and they sort of were falling down on that music. Okay, anyway, that's pretty much all the good stuff I can talk about. It is a good movie, but the plot is where it goes bad. Now let me just give you an example here. Uh, a Force-sensitive kid gets a hold of a droid that has some important information in it. And then the young Jedi has to escape the desert, a, a desert planet, planet in the Millennium Falcon, okay? You see where I'm going here? The Jedi then meets an old man who becomes like a father figure. Jedi receives Anakin's lightsaber. We find out that the rebels have to destroy a Death Star. Only way to destroy the Death Star is to shoot a specific area or attack a specific area, and it will just explode, okay? And then the father figure runs into a Sith that used to be a good person and someone who the father figure used to love. Okay? And then the Jedi has to witness the father figure's death. And then at the end, the Death Star gets blown up. Now, they don't call it the Death Star in this movie. They call it Star Killer Base, which is just another way of saying, we remade the Death Star but made it bigger. We were hoping that this would be like a symbol of our movie. No, this isn't just the Death Star. It's bigger. This isn't just Star Wars A New Hope. It's bigger. And that's what this movie is. It's a remake. I mean, the basic plot is that of A New Hope, and then the characters are just sort of the old characters mixed up. Like, Kylo Ren is an imitation of Darth Vader. They even go over that, and Rey calls him... She reads his mind back when he's trying to read her mind. And she says, you're afraid that you won't live up to Darth Vader. And that sh shocks him, and he's like, No! Blah, blah, he throws another tantrum. But that also sort of <coughs> is an example for J.J. Abrams' movie here, his movie. He wants to resemble Star Wars New Hope. He wants to be just as good or better than it. But he's, all he can do is just make a pale complexion to it and make something that's a copy of it, but not as good. Kylo Ren is, Darth Va is a copy of Darth Vader that's not as good. And J.J. Abrams' movie, The Force Awakens, is a new hope, just not as good. And that's, that's a perfect example of the movie. 
Okay, also, I don't like how they gave our original characters such a bad future here. Uh, Luke's, like, not even lived a life. He's been in some sort of way-off area the whole time, and that's disappointing. And then Han's not had the Millennium Falcon, and he had to split up from his wife, and his son's become evil. That's horrible. Leia has to read a, lead another rebellion, and... Uh, everything's gone to crap for her. She's just got no Han, got no son. It's all gone. And then Chewie has to live with Han, who's be go getting old and gonna die soon. Then Chewie will be all by himself. And then Han does die, so Chewie's all by himself now, and he has to find a new person to hang out with. So all of this is depressing. Which, if you go to the first movie, Star Wars A New Hope, it wasn't depressing. Were you depressed at the end of that movie? No. Obi-Wan dies at the end of that movie, but you don't feel torn apart by it. It makes you feel sad that Obi-Wan's dead, but they find a way of killing someone off, but still making it light and funny. And that was good. And what else we got? They should have made Han and uh, Ben Sky of Solo's relationship a little more clear. They should have shown like a flashback of them together or something like that to make us care about their relationship so that we would feel horrible when we see Han die at the hand of him. I don't know if it was just me, but I didn't really feel anything when Han got killed by Kylo Ren. It's just, I didn't hear the spoiler, but I saw it coming. I just, it's just like, he's Han Solo, and Harrison Ford wanted Han Solo to die, and they were able to get him back because I'm sure they promised him, you can die in this movie and you'll get exactly how you wanted it. So he, that, I just saw it coming that way and then I would have been torn apart by it if there was an emotional connection to the scene. Instead, what I got was just, Han's like, you're my son, come back, if it can be all okay. And he's like, no. <laughs> come on, you could have done better than that. I could have written better than that. All you have to do is establish that they had a relationship. Show maybe him running around as a kid, some sort of flashback where Han is just torn apart that his son has left him. And then when he finally sees his son and yells, Ben, and has him come over and they face each other, you'd have an emotional attachment. And then when he takes off his helmet, he's seeing his son there. Instead, what I saw was, I don't know if this was just Harrison Ford not playing it off well, but it didn't seem like he had love for the face that he was staring at. When you're an actor, you have to act like you care about the person that you're supposed to care about. But Harrison Ford didn't really play that off. And all I saw was two actors standing there, one pretending that he hates the other guy, the other guy just pretending that he likes this guy or cares about his future in some way. That was not good. I would not say they played that off well. It was not written well and it was not directed well. The death of Han should have been better. If we're going to see the death of Han, it should be better than that. Also, I'm a little disappointed that we won't ever see Han and Luke again together. That's a little disappointing. I wanted to see their friendship, their brotherhood, just at least one more time. And if Luke was in more of this movie, we would have seen that. That's another place where they fall down. They didn't have Luke in it. Luke has been the main character of the first three movies. New Hope, Empire and Return of the Jedi. It's all been his story progressing. Now some people may say, well, it's it just skips from generation to generation. Now Rey is going to be the new Jedi because it went from Anakin being the main character to Luke and now Rey. No, I don't want that. I want Luke. If Luke's gonna be here, he should be the main character. Or at least part of the story. If you're just gonna make it some sort of cameo thing, just make it a full-on cameo and don't make it so that he's going to have to show up and just be some sort of side character without... Uh, it's like they want to give him time, but they don't want to give him time. They want to make him main character, but they don't want to make him main character. Make up your mind. Are you going to focus around the new characters or the old characters? And when they had Han Solo in this movie, I thought that it was going to like focus on more of the older characters. Then I thought it was going to focus on the younger characters. Then it seemed like they gave too much time to the older characters if they're just going to be side characters. Han Solo got too much time in this movie, I feel. Because what we end up with is Han Solo dead, and anything that we learned about him or followed him with in 
in this movie was kind of a waste of time. It, his parts should have been cut a little bit shorter so we could have fit in more of the older, of the new characters, I mean. But anyway, next movie I'm really anticipating because this movie was good and it was interesting and it got me really hyped up for the next movie because I want to see more Poe Dameron, I want to see more Captain Phasma, I want to see how the story is going to unravel and it's interesting, but then again I'm also worried that they're just going to try and pull a whole Empire Strikes Back version now and it's going to just be copying the movies. It's going to be a New Hope was A Force Awakens. Next one will be <coughs> Episode 8 will be Episode 6 or <laughs> Episode whatever. And then they're just going to continue down remaking the stuff. Is Luke going to be the Yoda now? Is that what they're going to do? Is she going to visit him and he's going to teach her and then we're going to see him die like Yoda? I don't want to see that. We need to see Luke fighting. I want to see Luke take down the big bad. I want to see Luke as a main character again. Because I waited all this time just to see one minute of Luke. That was a big disappointment. And the fact that J.J. Abrams pulled that is a little bit of an annoyance to me. I hope they don't ever pull that crap again. Like, if the next movie only has, like, two minutes of them, I will personally go down to J.J. Abrams' house, burn it down, shoot him in the face, and set his grass on fire. And trample on the grass. Just because people hate when you step on their grass and destroy the grass. Okay. Um... I suppose that's pretty much all I can say for it. I've trashed it, but it's a good movie. It has too much usage of older plots and stuff. It has nice throwbacks and little uh, pieces from older movies that you could see, but then again, it has too much to the point where it's a copy, and the characters are good, the story is good, and it really gets you revved up for the new movies, so it is a good movie. I will give it... Out of ten stars, I will give it seven or eight. If it wasn't an original story, let's say A New Hope went a completely different way and this is our story now, I would give it nine stars just because it had good characters and a good story. But because of unoriginality, the fact that they're going to steal all that stuff, they get eight or seven points. I, I, somewhere in between there. 7.5. 7.5 stars out of ten, whatever. So... Tell me what you guys thought about it in the comments. Tell me what you guys thought about uh, Luke's cameo. What, what do you think is going to happen in the next movie? I am going to do a few more parts, one more part of this video, and then a few more videos talking about what I think will happen in the future of these movies. But anyway, I have more reviews coming up, toy-related, because I am a toy reviewer. But I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you then. Peace.